Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Cancer. If Cancer is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Let's see what these tea leaves have to say tonight. All right, all right. So, our card for this reading is the Ten of Cups. And this is all about the path to inner perfection, optimism. The power to enjoy abundance, abundance, <laughs> and longing for kind of, um, kind of a, uh, for things to just kind of go slowly, um, to linger in that perfection, the alignment, um, the balance, the middle way, all of these things, right? Uh, to go on for eternity, maybe. Whatever that means. <laughs> it's hard to conceive what eternity would even look like. All right. So let's see. I want to go back this way. This way, this way. Okay. And so... Uh, I see a bird, pretty apparently a bird here, sitting on maybe a little flower. The birds have been sitting all over my sunflowers, and um, I've been having to put posts up to hold the sunflowers up because they're heavy, but then I realize it's not just that they're heavy, it's the birds, they're sitting on them. <laughs> and I think probably quite a few little ones, so it's top, they topple over a little bit. So, anyways, uh, I feel like there is a sense of um, just fulfillment, um, the peace of a beautiful little songbird, um, that feeling of uh, the new dawn, right? That golden hour uh, when everything is just perfect, right? Um, not ready to go flying off for the day yet. Just kind of taking it all in. The same could be said for the end of the day, right? Just before dusk kind of, kind of sets upon us, we have that golden hour, that beautiful, beautiful, dreamy hour. And um, again, kind of sitting and taking stock of uh, the day before, what might come in the night, just kind of in a euphoric, splendoring little moment, okay? And so, um, I think that, you know, to me, I believe that uh, there, and I can't help but look at this one. Um, I see another bird here and then I'm looking at this figure and, um, um, it reminds me of, there is a desert spirit. Some say it's a demon. Um, and depending on where or how, people pronounce the name. It could be Azuzu, Pazuzu. Usually I've heard it without the P. Um, and this is, you may um, remember this uh, being kind of the intelligence tied to um, the possession in the exorcist. So when they're at the beginning, when they're um, you know, digging up artifacts and they find a, um, like a fetish 
uh, a votive statue of this of this intelligence, this demon, this god, this whatever, um, this tribal tribal uh, god um, of the wind, right? And um, he has these wings. It's kind of a, a very kind of a kind of a scary looking um, spirit. But I'm looking at this and I'm thinking. And if you know me from my readings, I have um, I have an affinity for some of the terrible looking um, deities, manifestations. Not because I am a person that worships them or anything like that, but just because I am very interested in the duality of being. I'm interested in... Um, looking into those darker places into integration shadow work um and you know also i strongly believe a lot of um old arcane tribal um you know forgotten uh deities entities whatever they were um are <laughs> <laughs> were definitely rewritten in what they may or may not have been. Okay, so anyways, this, I feel, is uh, that strong turning wind, that dry wind. That dry wind on an already arid space, right? Um, this, the openness of the desert. One of the most spiritual, metaphorical landscapes that we have, right? We go out to the desert, the wilderness, this barren or seemingly barren land, and you have to learn its secrets so that you may survive. You have to relinquish any kind of uh, concept of self-importance, these kinds of, uh, you know, and, and I understand this from my own um, to some degree. I, have, I live inside, um, but, you know, uh, I live in a place that is basically like it's the, it's the tundra out on the prairie. It gets very cold here during the winter, icy. You know, sometimes um, f negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, these are brutal environments. These are places where everything you do is with intention. You don't just go driving around in the middle of the night when the wind has come up and it's, you know negative 30 degrees what happens if you uh get into a ditch and there's nobody that can come out and save you you know i mean these are things you have to think about and so i think that when i see these kinds of especially you know again with the desert these harsh climates i think of um these deities as being very elemental first of all, but it's not so much about the quality of, you know, evil, but it's a quality of bringing the ordeals on, right? And I feel that, I'm not going to say that you're having ordeals coming, but listen, life is life. We all have ordeals, large and small, coming and going, and it will always be, right? Um, but I think more than anything, this is about how fortified you are. Okay, you've been through some things. You keep on. You have, um, you have that disposition of a warrior who is quietly humble, right? There's not a lot of posturing. You just go about your tasks and then you let them go. You don't have to brag about them. You don't have to, you know, boast and wear them as ornament.
but you like to be busy. You like to do the things that um, challenge you. You like to go out into the wilderness. Of course, you like to be comfortable here and there. And I think that in this Ten of Cups, maybe you are in a place of, as we said, that golden hour. Kind of looking back, contemplating all that you have achieved, all of your blessings. A wee bit of comfort here. Warmth. You know? But, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's all the more enjoyable because you know the other side. Not only do you know the other side, you like to go out and find it. You seek it. I would say that you are somebody who probably, um, you know, maybe you like to push yourself physically. Maybe you like to push yourself mentally. Maybe both. Um, you probably like, you know, uh, different kinds of games, logic, reason games. Um, you probably, you know, are into some kind of intentional movement. Maybe you like to do things that, um, are a little bit risky. Um, maybe kind of an, uh, a bit of an adrenaline junkie or you know you just I don't know you like to put yourself into positions where you have to figure out how to how to maybe like what are those called escape rooms something like that how do you get out of it <laughs> I don't know um let's see we do have a heart here and now there is a piece that is kind of fallen out or it, it has not showed up yet um, and I think that this is, you know, kind of your ever state, uh, cancer is you also as much of a, you know, humble, um, enduring kind of warrior that you are. And I apologize, the cat is eating. <laughs> um, you also are somebody who kind of always has that one little piece. Just have not found it yet um and i think that's what all the seeking is about um you know i think that you know it's hard it's also hard for you to not want more um you always are doing something you almost uh thrive in a state of obsession um and, you know being innovative uh fixated on you know more and more complexities and um i think that this is really the place that is more appealing to you than um the actual product of your work okay um and that's all right that's what keeps you going you know as long as it's within reason it's not harmful to you um, oh, this one's interesting. This one looks like, uh, the, let's bring it up here. This is maybe one of the more blessed, <laughs> one of the, let's see, how do I get this light on here? I'm trying to, okay, maybe we can, there we go. So we're looking at this one right here and it looks very much like the, Saturn um, alchemical symbol and so whew, um, that's in the spiritual zone there um, for me I, I again if you've seen any of my branding or <laughs> any of my pictures I always have a Saturn um, necklace on um, so this is this is really very much about in these in the in the process of interior work spiritual alchemy this is the idea of um that that very kind of um slow gradual but also confrontational um kind of working the lead out of the um, you know, the original material or materia, the soils 
of our being okay and it is you know just full of this lead and so the work is to kind of separate and refine and um this can be you know like in in therapy terms um this would be you know kind of like going back and excavating your childhood your traumas looking for these kind of root causes um maybe tied to genetic memory um you know things that have been learned through generations of uh conditioning trauma whatever just you know belief in general um the things that we kind of learn passively from those who raise us who we're raised around and um so all this can be pretty difficult plus on top of that we have our collective psyche okay so this is like i mean there's so many layers right um and the collective psyche is more of a community um the community psyche the things the beliefs that we kind of um have in our subconscious uh and then just on a, a human level the the net of human uh, consciousness right and so there's a lot of work to be done isn't there and so when I see this I and it's reaching up into that spiritual I know cancer you are kind of <laughs> the ones very is is beyond the um, Capricorn there uh, I would say the closest to that kind of low melancholy um, that emotionality that kind of has to be um, available to break into this deeper um, these deeper cleansing cycles okay now we all have the ability to access this stuff no matter what your um, placements are but I would say uh, and this is maybe just um, you know uh, my own perception <laughs> uh, but I would say most people who whenever I meet a cancer I know within a couple you know a minute or two just based on the things that they bring up immediately um, there's not a lot of hiding your depth right your interest in the things that go beyond the surface and um even if you try very hard, which some of you do, you know, some of you really try to, um, I think, and it's not because it's like this, like you're a fake or, you know, a chameleon or anything like that. I think that you just want to kind of, um, go along to get along. You want people to feel comfortable, right? So you talk about the stuff that, mm, yeah, you might be okay, whatever it's, neither here nor there but you have your specific things that you really want to talk about you really that's what you care about and um even when you try to hold that stuff back it comes out pretty quickly i would say so let's see what else do we have um so anyways i and yes with all the, i think that you are very much focused on this self work I think that this is closer to that kind of um, true will of your life, your life's work, right? And every everything else is maybe layers a little bit less deep, right? But it's all connected in some way. Um, and I'm trying to see. I keep looking at this one and it looks like a P. And then this one looks like a like a rocket maybe and this one that looks like the heart turned upside down it looks very phallic so I'm having I feel that I see these very phallic symbols throughout here and um, I've I think two things here uh, I believe that there's a lot of creative fertility happening, you know. Um, 
I also believe that this is maybe a little more um, literal where I feel like there are kind of um, movements of desire happening. Um, and I think that this has to do again with that Ten of Cups energy. I think that you are really finding power within yourself, within your abilities. And this is, it does not matter what, you know, gender you identify with. Um, but, you know, I do think that there is a sense of a rising, um, you know, love, lust, these kind of things. And it's tied to, uh, a lot of it is tied to self-esteem. Um, and to um, just, you know, feeling yourself here. And um, so I feel like this is maybe something that uh, can be explored, right? Obviously. And <laughs> I'm not giving you permission. You obviously can do what you want. But um, I think that, you know, this is going to help kind of, I feel like it's a good way to channel energy, right? If done with, you know, being, <laughs> being mindful, okay? Just being very mindful about how you um, treat yourself, treat others and all of that. Um, and I just say that because I think when we get into these places of feeling a lot of power, a lot of um, abundance, Sometimes we can um, move in ways that don't really speak to um, our authentic self, right? And then we go, we do whatever, 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 and we end up kind of lamenting the way that we handled um, that energy, okay? So it's just something to think about. Okay, now we have a goose who is eating. And, uh, you know, I think very few beings are as happy to eat as a goose that you're throwing. And I know we're not supposed to. Please do not go feed birds, pond birds, <laughs> bread. But, um, you know, I think you're, you're supposed to give them like corn. No, maybe not corn. Peas, I know for sure. Peas. Um, but anyways, nothing is happier than a pond bird who is getting some kind of food from you. Maybe not as much as a seagull who is, you know, raiding you for whatever chips or fries you have, but pretty close. Okay, and then we have an I and an L. Maybe I-L-L, ill. So, um, it almost seems like maybe um, there will be some kind of health things arising. Um, I think that this is something kind of more adjacent to your life, not something with you, uh, but I think it will be emotional. Um, kind of ki get the impression that you should maybe check in with parents, uh, maybe aunt, uncle, people that are older, right? Somebody who's kind of an, an older family member. Just kind of see how they're doing. Um, doesn't have to be any kind of big like acute thing or ongoing like chronic illness but it could just be that they're not feeling well okay all right let's see what we have here okay so we have a person who's wearing maybe a cape or a dress um and it looks like i almost feel like they're um Kind of flying up into the sky and it really it makes me feel again there is this kind of uh, um, this energy of power collecting um, like you could do anything that you wanted I think that things are kind of um, happening so quickly that um, it's kind of even amazing to you, even though you've put in so much work. 
um, it almost feels like uh, I don't want to think too much about how well things are going because then they'll start to fall apart. Um, but I do think that something that could be important for you is to um, either create or um, obtain come, some kind of uh, sacred object, okay? Some kind of... Um, some kind of totem or like a, a fetish um, object, um, votive, something like a little statue, um, maybe something you have created, um, maybe like one of those little, uh, all of the, like all, <laughs> all of these horror movies or uh, like true detective or, um, I don't even, I can't think of, there's, it's just like a trope in a lot of, um, these kind of thriller, crime thriller things. They always have those little corn dolls <laughs> that are like left at the scene of a crime or whatever. And, um, anyways, I think they're interesting, not because they have anything to do with that. They're just really kind of neat. And I love that kind of, um, kind of uh, folk magic or folk um, sympathetic magic. Um, again, maybe it would be kind of akin to a fetish um, doll. And when I say fetish, I just wanted to say that it it's a, a term within magic and religious practice, not, not, not anything else. Um, so, uh, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Some, th I'm sure that you will be able to find it. But something to really mark this little victory in your life. Okay? Um, to kind of put some of your um, will and intent, your energy into, and to keep, you know, in a elevated place in your home. Okay? All right. I'm going to thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. Um, if you'd be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. And we all know that the uh, algorithm kind of decides everything. So any kind of engagement really helps. If you like the video, if you watch the video all the way through, if you share the reading um, on some other social media, of course you don't have to, but um, I always want to mention it does help. Um, other than that, if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. And um, if you want to leave a comment, I absolutely read all of them. I love reading them. I love receiving them. Um, they make me, <laughs> often they make me so happy. Um, you know, sometimes very emotional. And um, I just really appreciate being able to get to know so many of you. Um, it is a great honor of my life, truly, um, to have this channel, to be able to do these readings, something that I love doing, and um, have the ability to connect with people. So, I thank you, thank you, thank you, and we will talk again real soon.